Hello, my name is Francis Beresford and I'm a GP and I've been practicing meditation for quite a number of years and I'm particularly interested in the posture for doing practice uh, because I had a lot of problems with that and to start with I was very stiff. And so here I am at the Samta Centre in Langumbo, um, Wales, and you can see I'm sitting what, what in the West is called cross-legged on the floor in the way you're taught um, as a child to sit cross-legged. And I'm, and I'm a bit stiff and I have to say this is not particularly comfortable. So how can I sit on the floor more comfortably? Well, one way is to put both knees flat on the ground. So if I move my left knee sideways and bring it out this way as far as you can, and I then do the same with the right leg, so you can see my, my whole posture is now flatter and my knees are, are standing up less. But there's still a bit of a strain on my back. I'm having to tilt forward slightly in order to um, make the posture comfortable. And I need to raise, raise myself up a bit to improve it. So I take the cushion, put it underneath myself, and you can probably see immediately I can sit more upright and, it's, uh, and it is much more comfortable and my, both my knees are, are flat on the ground. Um, you can then go one step further, which is to use what's called the half lotus position, where you move the left leg, right leg, up onto the left thigh, in that, in that way. Now, if I then have my body upright, you'll see my knees kind of just off the ground. Now that's fine, and you can and you can have your knee off the ground, but if that feels a little uncomfortable. In order to bring it onto the ground, you just make your cushion slightly higher, and you can see both my knees are flat on the ground, and this is actually much more comfortable than when I started. When practicing meditation, some people will need to use a chair. This is perfectly fine, although the following needs to be kept in mind. As with sitting on the floor, make sure the back is straight but relaxed, and sit away from the back of the chair. Use a cushion if necessary, and it is best to take off your shoes and have a good sense of contact with the ground. Place the right hand over the left, with the thumbs gently touching. Gently close the eyes. Hello there. So today I'm going to teach the first stage of a breathing mindfulness meditation, which provides an effective way to calm the chatter of the mind. Um, the ideal is to find a comfortable posture where you can be balanced, stable, relaxed, but also alert. And that's the kind of quality of mind that we're also encouraging in the practice, one of being alert but relaxed. So once we've established the base in the legs, and you put your right hand into the palm of your left hand and have the thumbs just gently touching like that. And the back straight but not too stiff. <clears throat> And at this stage, we bring our attention to the breath and just notice how it is for a moment. And then we begin the practice by allowing the breath to lengthen to its longest comfortable breath. So breathing in ideally through the nose if you can, breathing in the longest comfortable in-breath through the nose and longest comfortable out-breath through the nose as well. And the important thing is that it's comfortable. You don't want to force it too much. Once you've found that longest comfortable breath, what you do is you start counting in your head 
from one up to nine at the end of the in-breath. So breathing in and counting your head, one, two, three, four, so on, up to nine. And then as you breathe out, count back down from nine to one. Nine, eight, seven, six, and so on. Now you might find when you start that you, you're counting quite quickly and you get to nine and you've still got some breath left, in which case you need to slow down the pace of the counting. Alternatively, you might find that you get to six and you're already sort of dying because you've got too much, too much breath in your body, in which case you need to speed it up. So there's a way of matching the pace of the counting to the length of the breath, and you'll, you'll get it by a sort of trial and error. And all we're trying to do in this practice is apply the mind to the numbers, to the counting. And you, so you apply the mind to the counting and you will find inevitably that it wanders off. Now this does not mean that you can't meditate and this is a common misconception when people come to meditation, they sit down and they try and do it and the mind wanders off and goes thinking about what they did yesterday or what they've got to do later or that person that annoyed them or that person that they like or so on and so on and so on. The mind chatters away like a monkey. That does not mean that you can't meditate. That simply means that you're a human being. <laughs> and that's why we're here, to learn how to meditate, to learn gently, to give the mind some direction and just gently ease it um, with this very simple object of the numbers and the counting in the head. So you'll start counting and you'll notice that the mind has wandered off to something else. As soon as you notice that it's wandered off, all you do is let go of wherever it wandered off to and gently bring it back to the numbers. And when you notice that it's wandered off, you might think, oh, I've lost it. I'm not doing the meditation properly. Actually, that moment when you become aware that you've wandered off is a great thing. You've become aware of what your mind is doing. Uh, so in a way, that's a little moment of awakening. That's mindfulness of mind. And that's actually a good thing. So just be, be gentle with how you use and work with your mind in the meditation. So the mind will wander off, just gently bring it back, return to the counting. And I would recommend when you start, all you need to do is maybe three minutes, three minutes a day, and you'll be amazed that even just those three minutes of doing something as simple as counting in your head can have a really profound effect of bringing more calm to your life and a bit more joy as well. One of the things um, I've been interested lately is the instruction given by the Buddha about becoming aware of in-breath and out-breath. Um, and though there are various descriptions of how this might be done, um, during sitting meditation practice, um, there is very little instruction about how to do it um, in everyday life. And as we may breathe in and out 20,000 times a day, um, where do you start? Um, so fortunately, um, our breath is very or an in-breath and out-breath is very intimately connected to movements of our arms and our trunk, um, rather less so to our um, legs and, and, and when walking. And therefore, the easy way to become aware of what is in-breath and out-breath is when you're doing um, activities in everyday life. And so every time you, you stretch out your arm, it will be on an in-breath or an out-breath. Every time you draw your arm back, it will be on an in-breath or an out-breath. Every time you sit down, it will be on an in-breath or an out-breath. Every time you stand up, it will be on an in-breath or an out-breath. Um, every so so many many different movements even quite small movements every time you do up a button it'll be down on an in-breath or an out-breath or you s switch on and off a light switch um, so there are many 
many activities where you can become aware of it. Um, and perhaps the easiest way is when you have a repeated movement. Um, so when you're sweeping or ironing or chopping, um, just to notice for a few minutes and, and to become aware of, of um, of whether each movement you make is on an in-breath and out-breath um, can be very helpful. It um, tends to give one much more a sense of presence in, in what one is doing. Um, and the Buddha particularly recommended it for um, quieting down um, unhelpful thoughts. Um, and it does seem to be very powerful in that way. Um, and you can also practice it while eating. If you, if, if, if as you bring food to your mouth, notice whether it's an in-breath or, or an out-breath when you do it. And in many other routine activities, getting dressed, washing, um, all those sorts of things. And in time, you can see it's almost like a kind of ballet, the way the breath coordinates with our movement. It's um, fascinating. So, if you want to have a go, do, and I can strongly recommend it as a way of bringing some awareness of the breath into um, everyday life.